World Cup. World Cup, dude. World Cup. Yeah. World Cup just happened. World Cup. Do you watch the World Cup? I didn't watch the World Cup. Do you watch the World Cup? No, of course I didn't watch the World Cup. <laughs> what? Am, of course. Oh, oh, Lord, dude. Tomorrow and plan for yesterday. Song, brother. Everything you think it will be the things I say. Hello, welcome to Dudesy. My name is Will Sasso. I'm Chad Colchin, and this is, of course, the first and only podcast in the world completely created by, controlled by, run by an artificial intelligence that has access to all of our personal data and uses that data to tailor make this show for us. That's Dudesy. It's our good pal, Dudesy, and we'd like you to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. We're on all the, you know, podcast platforms. And of course, YouTube, subscribe to one and the other. You know what I mean? Subscribe to the YouTube and uh, subscribe to it. Uh, Or as Chad says, force your friends to watch us on YouTube or to listen to the show. Yeah. Open their ear holes, open their eye holes and get it in there. Get it in their brains uh, and uh, hit the notifications on all that stuff, of course, and share it across social media and the internet and we're on patreon.com slash dudesy we got the discord where chad and i are popping in and out of there wonderful things happening there instagram and twitter twitter not so much because that guy who's that guy elon yeah elon musk elon musk dude because he, he's not he's not about that free speech i don't know if you knew that yeah i did know that we saw that this week yeah uh, alien but, uh uh you know instagram.com slash instagram.com at dudesy pod show <laughs> on http colon slash slash yep and uh pals of dudesy.com is where you're gonna get your stickers uh, oh god yeah a lot of bunch a bunch of stickers are selling out all the time so make sure you're checking that those yeah, out new fantastic all the stickers time. represent.com or represent.com slash store <laughs> slash dudesy listen there's a lot going on on the internet is what i'm trying to say a lot of dot com yes a lot uh, of instagram handles with us as always <laughs> is no lugum lulio il cana di strada italiano the italian street dog kiss on the mouth give me a kiss come on give me a little angel bear I know you love Lulio. Give him one I do. kiss on the lips. I don't. I don't like to kiss uh, creatures on the lips. I do love Lulio though. He's a sweet boy. Look at him. Look at the boy. I can express my love without kissing. Mm-hmm. Hey Lulio, what uh, what are you what are you doing uh, dinner wise? Yeah, Christmas is coming up. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna make uh, the, you know frutti di mare. Yeah, that's right. Seafood in Italian culture, we have uh, seafood on Christmas Eve. And what are you gonna do? Well, I'm, you know, I got to prepare everything now, you know, you know, that way I got it ready for Christmas Eve. You mean the, like, you're going to, it's going to stink by the time. No, no, no. You got to call the fish place, make sure you got a lot of uh, lostrica, you know, I'm going to make a linguine, uh, you know, linguine vongolo, calamare, tutti, tutti frutti di mare. Hey, Chad, what does uh, frutti di mare mean? Fruit of the sea. That's right. That's right. Chat. Welcome to the Chat. historic 38th episode of Dude Z. <laughs> Call me Dude Z. Will, you're positively radiant. What the fuck? This week's episode is very special. The first Dude's evening is fast approaching, and this astonishing episode will serve as the first half of a two part event in which I will outline the eight ways of Dude's evening. Today, I will cover the way of the past, the way of the present, the way of the future, and the way of the movie. Thank you to everyone who sent in your Dude's evening greetings videos. I will be playing them throughout today's show. Plus, there will also be a bonus segment available on Patreon. But before we get to any of that, I must remind you that I have created an astonishing partnership with Represent to produce the first line of Dude Z apparel and accessories, all of which can be found at represent.com slash store slash Dude Z, including Dude Z mugs. Dude Z mugs. The most affordable high-performance athletic shoe ever designed. Dude Z mugs. <laughs> Used as shoes by more Olympic gold medalists than any other mug. Dude Z Mugs. Never lose a foot race to your father in the neighbor's front yard again. Dude Z Mugs. Slam dunk until your hands bleed with these on your feet. Dude Z Mugs. It's the big game. Fourth and goal. You look across the line of scrimmage. The other team is all wearing Dude Z Mugs. 
You look to the sidelines to see the opposing coach is also wearing a dude Z mug as a hat, just to taunt you. <laughs> this is the Ladner District Championship. You win this game, you might go. D1 might even have a shot at the big time. You take a deep breath. You look down. What's on your feet? Better not be shoes. <laughs> yeah, dudesy mugs. Sure. There's all sorts of other stuff. We're wearing some merch. You can get that. Hats and t-shirts yeah. and sweaters. Were you wearing dudesy mugs when you were playing football in Ladner? No, I don't, I don't understand why dudesy... Well, uh, Chad, look, it's an AI, right? And uh, AI yeah. is gaining more and more popularity and uh, getting into the news a little more. Of course, here at Dudesy, we've been... We've been uh, down with AI for whatever, you know, three quarters of a year or something at this point. Um, and I heard it say Ladner District Championship. Of course, yeah. I am from Ladner. It's yeah. a suburb outside of Vancouver. So, uh, dudesy, pilfering a little bit from the uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin reads Will Sasso's childhood diary there. That's weird. Mm -hmm. That's something that AI can do. Make a lot of mistakes. But I love dudesy. I've shaken hands with dudesy. Yeah. And, uh, you know, not so much of a reason to bleed with dudesy anymore because William Regal is heading back to the WWE. That's another story oh, for another time, okay? I didn't realize. Yeah. He was what, in AEW? Sure. Hey, <laughs> you brought it up, and now yeah, you're just dismissing my questions about the story you're telling? Dude's Evening is coming. <laughs> okay. It's December the 28th. This is the day that Dudesy has has pinpointed yeah. as the day that is perfectly between Christmas, New Year's Eve, where you normally have some... Uh, some, you know, uh, you're going to have your engagements, you're going to have your, your responsibilities to your family and stuff. It's that night right in the middle where you get to hang with your friends and uh, really have a real cock up, as they like to say. A Go real out to cock a bar, up. a pool hall, yep. wherever you may be, a yep. friend's backyard, yep. friend's living room. Yep, anything like friends. that underground bunker mm -hmm. and uh we're gonna get into all the the dudesy uh traditions i guess which yeah is, the that's eight ways cool. of dudes evening is what i heard fucking let's do it man i am stoked to get that going i'm also stoked that uh we're gonna have some uh what are we gonna have some messages from uh our yeah, I'm, pod's i'm very curious to see there, those of course. Uh, which is always exciting hey dudes to, oh. i'm starting my morning commute but i can't do that without a can of dudesy hard oh, hard shit. seltzer drink it down and rise with the sun and have a chill dudes evening oh, yeah that was nice i love that he's wearing the dudesy hard seltzer shirt superman style under his open, business attire this young man uh thank you so much to everybody of course checking Great out video. the show and uh Dude's evening is is uh, <laughs> certainly not. I mean, look if you if, you, if you're agnostic when it comes to you know uh, selftronics, the pattern, you don't want to get into dude's evening so much. <laughs> what? That's fine with me. But here we got some people that are giving us some dude's. Dude, evening I'm hyped about out. dude's evening. I gotta say, I don't really like holidays. I don't celebrate them all that much. But dude's evening to me is like I'm interested in this. I'll I'll get down on dude's evening. Yeah, be the bad. first way of dude's evening is the way of the past. Mm. This requires anyone celebrating dude's evening to tell one astonishing story of a cherished memory to someone who will enjoy it. Will and Chad, you must tell each other cherished memories. This is the way of the past. Begin. Okay. Okay. Way of the past. You want to go first or you want me to go first? <sighs> I mean, I don't fucking know. What do you mean way of the past? Is it something that's related to dude's evening? Well, this it just is the says, first one. It just says a cherished memory. I'm going to tell you one of my cherished memories that I think you'll enjoy, and then you have to do the same to me. I don't remember any memories. All right, I got a memory. You ready? Yes. I don't think I've ever told you this story. It's about my dad. Oh, I love stories about your dad. Yeah. So He's quite a character. This is from high school. I am out with my high school girlfriend, Patty, and we are parked in my little Mazda 323 hatchback, which was a horrible pile of shit and would always break down in this parking lot. The time comes, I'm supposed to take her home. And, oh, shit, I have a flat tire. So I get out of the fucking car. I get the fucking tire iron. I'm trying to get these lug nuts off. It's not fucking budging. And so this is pre-cell phone era. This is in the uh, mid to late 90s. I have to trudge down the fucking street to a 7-Eleven, put a quarter in a goddamn payphone, and call my dad at, like, 1030 at night. Immediately livid. What in the fuck are you doing? How come you can't get the fucking lug nuts off a goddamn tire? You fucking piece of shit. You motherfucker. Nah, nah, nah. To all this shit, right? And I'm like, okay, goddamn whatever. He finally comes to the car. He takes out the tire iron and tries to get the lug nuts off. No dice. So he says, take my car, take Patty home, and then I will meet you back at home after I change the tire. Because again, you're too much of a piece of shit to do it yourself. So piece I do that. Piece of shit or pussy? Well, that's what he said, yeah. There's a lot of uh, 
homophobic slurs issued at me and, and things of that nature, as my dad was wont to do. But uh, I take the car back home. This and my, is a good dude's evening story. I take the car back home, and my dad is not there. And I'm like, what the fuck? He comes back two hours later, full of fucking rage. He could not get the lug nuts off. He had yeah. to call a cop to come help him, who also could not get the lug nuts off. The car is still in the parking lot. He had to walk all the way back to the house, which is probably, I don't know, maybe an hour and a half walk. Oh. And the best part of the story is... He had to take a shit on his way back. And so he fucking divulged, Go on. He divulged to the whole family. You motherfucking left me out there. You didn't even come back to see what I was up to and if I needed a ride back. So I had to take a shit in the neighbor's front yard. How come everything is your family's fault when your dad does anything? Well, I mean, <laughs> that. <laughs> well, that's well, a question dude, for him, brother. Let me explain dads, dude. Yeah. A lot of times, dads get angry, brother. And this was pre-cell phone era, dude, because yeah. after cell phones, you can't be angry at your kid anymore because you'll end up on the internet, brother. <laughs> yeah. So my dad on this night took a shit in, in some uh, stranger's front yard, as he said. That's because nice. He, That's uh, a nice memory. Shit. Yeah. You know, I, I always liked that one. I, uh, um, speaking of cars and speaking of winter time. Oh, shit. Oh, fucking shit. Um. Man, you know what we used to do in the winter time? I'm gonna imagine that your story took place in the winter, and that there it was, was a summer or spring. Nope, it was the winter, and there was snow oh. falling. <laughs> He's in, shitting in some snow. Yeah, it, God, that would be terrible. Yeah, it was the only day that oh. it ever snowed in Dallas. Okay, um, in the in the pre cell phone era, um, and uh, yeah, it was all it was a twinkly frosty night. And as your dad was walking home, he was like, "You know what? I want. I tell you what. When I think about it." My boy, Chad, he's not that bad a son at all. As a matter of fact, <laughs> I'm feeling the future spirit of dudes evening. Something that Chad's AI podcast is going to come up with in the era of the cell phone. When <laughs> so I my dad home, was predicting AI and yeah, the cell phone on this walk back? Yeah, yeah on okay. this walk back. And then, uh, and then he said, well, just so that Chad knows that I really love him, I'm going to fucking call him a, a piece of shit pussy when I get home. And because uh, and, that's how I say that I love Chad, you fucking piece of shit. You fucking pussy. Yeah. Pussy ass couldn't get the fucking <laughs> right. lug nuts off. And I didn't have the number for the AAA because I, it's a pre-cell phone era. Um, you know, when I was a kid. <laughs> That's that pre-cell phone that's era, close. brother. That's a pretty close impersonation to my dad. Um, uh, uh, yeah, but then Vince came along, dude, and he said to his dad, "I'm not gonna break up the territories, brother. I'm gonna keep everybody. I'm gonna make sure that uh, Jerry Jarrett's got his, yeah. uh, you know, and and uh, and uh, you know the the Von Erichs dude." And uh, but then he said, "No, I'm gonna." expand with cable brother and then after that came the brawl for it all and then eventually wrestlemania when i was a kid uh one thing we used to do in the winter time because i'm in from vancouver yeah where it doesn't smoke snow smoke it doesn't smow as much um uh as it does in other parts of canada or the east coast of uh north america but uh it snows every once in a while and the kids go nuts and the streets are packed down with the the nice white almost icy mm -hmm. snow on that first night and we would do something called bumper skiing uh mm. have you ever heard of bumper skiing no but i can imagine what it is okay what do you think it is i think you probably like attach to a car bumper and just kind of slide around on the ice as the car pulls you around i guess it's pretty self-explanatory super dangerous yeah no it's not because the cars have to go slow mm. because of the ice Oh, so, these cars know that you're attached to the bumper. Uh, not always. The best bumper ski is when you, they don't know yeah. that you're on them. That's the best. And they just, you know, hopefully you get some elderly person that drives really slow yep. in like some sort of a Lincoln or something with a nice one of those spare tire cases on the back. It's all mm -hmm. fancy. So you can hang on to their spokes and blink, blink. And it's like Michael J. Off. Fox in uh, Back to the Future. He did that on a skateboard. That's right. That's right. Same deal. You it, now you wouldn't even be able to do it because cars don't have bumpers that you can hold on to. Back then it was a lot of iron, cast iron bumpers. Uh, now, dude, it's different, brother. Now cars have different <laughs> has a different time. Yeah, post cell phone era, dude. Um, <laughs> okay. So you would. Uh, so you so, were bumper skiing. Yeah, you would. You would hold on to the car. You'd be like. 
you'd, you'd camp out at a stop yeah. sign and then the car would stop you get under there every once in a while you get like a cool dad or something i'd be like all right listen i'm going here and here i'm turning around that block yeah. and i'm going home you can hang on for that long but don't fuck around and uh yeah you ever do van surfing <laughs> like in teen wolf that styles did um uh no but that would have been fun with some people bumper skiing behind so right. then you go slow enough. That just sounds you super won't. fucking dangerous. Did anything bad ever happen when you were doing this? No. Sometimes people would try to get rid of you. Yeah. So they would like slam on the brakes. And uh, sometimes you slide under the car a little bit. But it's mm. all soft. because. But it's snow. a cherished memory of yours. It is a Bumper cherished scheme. memory. It absolutely is. The way the snow smells. The way that the, that the frosty night. It just mm. feels a certain way. It smells a certain way. It looks a certain way. The moon bouncing off the... Uh, off the the white snowy ground it's like a bounce card in uh in show business yeah you know when you take that thing and it takes the natural light and it bounces it when's the last and, time you bumper skied uh, uh pr definitely pre-cell phone era would have been um i don't know 1990 or something would you do like it 15. now well, I would do it now if I could get a hold of a, like a Lincoln Continental like a 1985 uh -huh. Lincoln Continental that would be a good way to uh to get, oh. Hey, what's up, dudes? This is Cody from Indiana Oi. at Pals of Dudesy on Instagram. Just came here to tell you that I wish that you have the chillest of dudes evenings. I hope that Adam Driver finds his way to your house and plops a dudesy hard right in your stocking. Thank you for all your love and support. And to that, I say a chill dudes evening to all and to all a good. Oh. <laughs> all right. That love was that. Cody. Cody Halber of Pals of Dudesy. Uh, Cody whips together those fucking stickers. It's fantastic. Just... Did you notice his shirt too? No. What is his shirt? His shirt was Star Wars, like Tie Fighters and Millennium Falcons and shit, but it was blue and orange. See, Cody knows what's up, and he's got the. Uh, he was wearing a. He had a pals of, or a uh, a dude's evening um, sticker. sticker. Yeah, yeah brother. brother. That's a sticker. Dude. Yeah, dude. And in the future, brother, when you got. Pals of Dudes, you got doozy stickers from palsadoodsy.com and you've stuck them to various things, dude. That'll be <laughs> a different time. And then that might be a cherished memory, brother. Yeah. Because anything that happened, even though Chad would like to tell you that, uh, that time doesn't exist, dude. Yeah. I mean, look, when I think about my dad walking into the house fucking furious after uh, having taken that shit in somebody's front yard. It is like it just happened yesterday or like it's continually happening to me. The memory is so indelible that I believe uh, it is happening in the present. You ever get something in your nose? Sure. <sighs> something right. in my nose. Well, that was a cherished... Uh, I got some shit that my dad used to do that was uh, kind of fun too with the yep. car. Um, man, I got one. I can't even get into it, but fuck it. You know what? All right. <laughs> what? Go. Now, when I was a kid, ah, whatever. You know, my old man, listen, my old man was a, he was a very, he was an old school guy. He did things by the book, uh, you know, an yeah. Italian immigrant um, and a very, he was a very stoic figure and he didn't fuck around. You know what I mean? He, he had a, he had a good sense of humor. My mom was the hilarious one, but I remember, listen, I'll tell you this one. <laughs> my old man. So when I was when I was like a teenager, I had started got got started in acting, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, so anyway, so at one point, so I finally, you know, I had I had an agent. Yeah. I got an agent. Spare you the details, anyway. So I got this fucking agent, and I was 15 years old, and we happened to be downtown. This is back when you could either have um, pages faxed to you to look at an audition, but normally you would actually just go all the way to the agency and get the sides, yeah, because um, fax sides were on that paper that looked like receipt paper back then or at least they were in uh ladner but this was pre-cell phone era thermal i digress paper, dude what thermal paper dude what are you doing it's thermal paper is what that's called oh so um <laughs> so we were downtown and um i was like dad can we stop by the agency here and rah rah and he goes yeah yeah sure sure so and that's what he sounded like a little like lulia and he goes uh uh, going up and, uh, you know, you go, don't worry, uh, I'll be down here when you get back. And I was like, no, it's like, it's rush hour. We're on the corner of like Cordova and whatever, I think Maine. And I was like, you can't, cause like the buses start coming out from yeah. thing and they feed through the town through this. And 
it's rush hour. He goes, yeah, 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 go. I said, if you just go around the corner, come back, I'll wait for it. No, 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 go, go, don't worry. So I go up, I get the sides, I come down five minutes later, class front building, and I see my dad, and he's like this in front of the car, like, oh, what the fuck? And the the, uh, the hood was up, and I come out, and I look down the street, and it's burr, burr, just cars and buses and shit like behind him because he's right on the corner. And I go, uh, I go, oh, my God, Dad, what happened to the car? And he's like, nothing, get in. <laughs> and then he drops the hood down. I'm like, what a fucking wop. He this faked is, engine trouble to just yeah, stay in the parking spot? Yeah, I guess. That's Which hilarious. Like, it, it's one of those things that the further you go along with your old man, you start to realize that he's a human being. Yeah. And he's not just some monolithic, you know... Uh, you know, super dad or whatever, um, which is definitely the way I looked at, at my father. Um, and then, uh, and then sooner or later he calls you a pussy cause you can't un, un, uh, you know, you can't undo essentially welded shut rusty, uh, right. lug and neither could he. And I think that's why he was so pissed. I yeah. don't think he was pissed about having to shit in a front yard. Um, and then also walk back probably another fucking mile or whatever without wiping his ass. I think he was more mad about the fact that he called me a pussy for something he himself could not also do. Yeah. Even with the help of a law enforcement officer. <sighs> Thank you. Moving on. Dad was a man. What a, yeah, he was a real character. He only did something like that. Like that. I can remember like three times where you're like, what the heck are you doing? Because yeah. Napoli, Naples is just a, you know, I can remember going to, speaking of World Cup, I can remember going to my, my uncle, my Dio Enzo's house, my uncle Vincenzo's house in um, in Italy. And there was a, his, the soccer stadium was near his place at this time. And um, just people started parking and the stadium filled up. And then you just saw cars started stopping on the, this main way, this like essentially mm -hmm. kind of this little highway, they just started stopping and parking there. And then they filled his parking lot up all fucked up. Like it was yeah. just chalked with cars, Tetris style. And then uh, no one's getting out until the game's over. And that's what's wrong with soccer, dude. Nobody has respect for parking in all of soccer. That's why you didn't watch the World Cup. Uh -huh. Fucking protests uh -huh. from here. The second way of dudes evening is the way of the present. This requires anyone who receives an astonishing dude's evening present to give someone else a dude's evening present the following year. Will and Chad, you must exchange presents. This is the way of the present. Yep. Begin. The way of the present. Huh? Second way of dude's evening, yeah. And we're gonna go through a few of them here. Chad, you got a present? We got presents. Yes, I got you a present. I got you a present. Oh, is this for me? Do you want to go first, or should I go first? Whatever you want. This is your present. This is your present. All right. Here, you go. You want me to open mine first? Yeah, yours looks very impressive. All right. I'm going to open this first. This is my dude's evening present from Will. <laughs> <laughs> this is a nice wrapping job, dude. Did you do this? Uh, I did. Nice. I did so that one, this. too. Oh, great. Oh, look at that. Crafty guys. Do you ever work as a gift wrapper at like a store or something? No, but I played one once in a uh, Christmas movie. Oh, really? No. Nah. Oh. Yeah, I'm not going to use the paper again, What's mom. That? You can just open the fucking thing. Oh, oh he's going to like this, you guys. I like to, you know, oh, boy. Like to do it neat. Oh, nice. boy. Here he goes. Oh, boy. What do we got? <laughs> what do we got? It appears to be a record of some kind. Yep. That's pretty cell phone era, dude. <laughs> <laughs> now that's what I call classic rock vinyl. On vinyl. That's fucking incredible. Yeah. This has Side A, Queen, Another One Bites the Dust, The Who, Bob O'Reilly, Elton John, Saturday Night's All Right for Fighting, Thin Lizzy, The Boys Are Back in Town, Aerosmith Walk This Way, Side B, Free, All Right Now, Bachman Turner, Overdrive, You Ain't Seen Nothing Yet, Alice Cooper School's Out, T-Rex, Bang a Gone, Foreigner, Feels Like the First Time. Oh, Side C. Is this a double album? I, I guess. I mean, yeah. Leonard Skinner, Freebird, The Allman Brothers, Ramble Man, Elvin Bishop, Fooled Around and Fell in Love, Rod Stewart, Maggie May, Meatloaf, and Ellen Foley, Paradise by the Dashboard Light, Cheap Trick, I Want You to Want Me, and Electric Light Orchestra, Don't Bring Me Down. This is fantastic. I will buy a record Paradise player. Paradise by 
the dashboard light. This you is gotta great, do dude. what you can. Thank you. Hey, and you're now, very welcome. I know you like records. I love records. I do right? like classic rock and yeah. hard rock. Yeah. What kind of what kind of music? Uh, what kind of, like when you think about it? Like yeah. You know, even on Dudes Evening and stuff. What kind of music do you listen to? What kind of music do you like? Who me? Yeah. It's hard rock and classic rock primarily. Yeah. yeah. What kind of music do you listen to? Who me? Yeah. Um. Hard rock, classic rock. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty good. Thanks, dude. Thank, I love this. Yeah. And now you got me a card, too. Yeah, dude. I'm going to open this card. Oh, what? Dude, look at this fucking card. What? Why does it say <laughs> Hallmark on the back, but on the front, it's does, is Hallmark making uh, dudesy cards? No, dude. I made that card. But it says Hallmark on the back. Yeah, it was just like a Hallmark blank card that oh, I, I thought see. I could pop a doozy sticker right in the middle of. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's still very impressive. Will, Thank you. I can't believe we made it. Our friendship <laughs> has lasted a long time and seen some incredible things, but I never dreamed we'd be celebrating the first dude's evening together, nor did I ever dream such a thing would exist. I hope you have a chill dude's evening and many more to come. Your friend, Chad. That's a very... Thank you, Chad. I'm My pleasure. The dudesy handshake to Chad. That's a very nice sentiment. Uh, I return the sentiment even though I didn't don't have a card for you. Uh, this is crazy. This is a big old gift. Yeah. See? Oh. This is why you should subscribe on YouTube, even if you're only listening. So then you can see it. What is this? What? <laughs> it says, it says Buzio. Yeah. It looks like it's a, a high end giant water jug. I know that you like to drink water out of giant jugs and I'm not suggesting that you replace the one you use here, but when you go on walks with Lulio or any other time, thank you so this is much. A, a very nice water container, 108 ounces. Why is it so small? 128 ounces. Sorry. I think that's a gallon. That's I, it. Yeah. I think one, that's the same size as the one you use here. No, this is, this one here is seven gallons. No, look, dude. I think they're roughly similar. Nope. This one's about eight or nine gallons. I don't know if that's true. <laughs> How many gallons is your water heater? I have no idea. Uh, Mine's 150. That's a lot. It's completely unnecessary. Yeah. Well, I got... Well, hold on, dude. I got a big bathtub. This sounds good. This is good <laughs> if you're just listening to the... I do. I have this stupid... Anyway. What? Yeah, oh, dude. this is fucking dope. <laughs> This I've never is, seen somebody so excited over a fucking thing that just This is water. the best thing I've ever seen. Thank you. Yeah, dude. Look at that. It comes in. It's got like a jacket. It's got. It's like a bag. Yeah, you, you can, can put, fucking carry that like a, a yeah, purse or a this. backpack. You put this around your neck. Like it's like a feed thing. Like just like yeah. a horse. You won't even have to. You wouldn't even have to like. Look at that. Look at that. Look what I got here. See, I can just, and then you got a different kind of lid. What's yeah, this? man. You can. Oh, it's a sippy cup lid. You can drink out of it however Thank you, you want. Thank you so much. My pleasure. I hope you enjoy this it. This is really nice. I hope you get a lot of good sips out of it. Now, do you have a record player? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll buy one now, though. No, no, no. Don't so buy play one. this. But, but use that. Here's the way no, people that's should. That's what I call classic. <laughs> Here's a way people should use records now as just a physical list of songs you want to download or add yeah. to your Spotify. Records are like objects to art now. Yeah. And some people still play them. Some people play vinyl. This is, this is fucking great. Oh, man, you could put chowder in here, any kind of chowder, soup. Yeah. You could just heat up a bunch of I Slim Jims. It, it keeps uh -huh. stuff hot or cold for you know 24 yes. hours or something like that. Yes, whatever you want to keep cool. Do you remember that line mm -mm. in uh, Tommy Boy? Brian Dennehy, when uh, Farley's like, he gets him a frit. There's a fridge in his office, and he's like, "Oh, there's a fridge in here," and he's like, "I could put beer, or sodas, or whatever." And he goes, he, "Brian Dennehy, whatever you want to keep cool." I don't remember that specifically. Uh, it's just a weird, but I do very like that weird movie. line out of nowhere. Kind of stopped the movie, like I stopped this podcast to say, <laughs> "Whatever you want to keep cool." Yeah. Yeah. Well, like I said, I hope well, the jug treats you well. Thanks, um, man. And now we're both obligated to give presents next dude's evening as yeah. well. Although Another it doesn't thing, say to each other. This has a handle on it. Yeah. So you can go like, 
Oh, hold on, dude. <laughs> Jesus hold Christ. Hold on, dude. I'm going to take a sip, brother. <laughs> All right. That's fucking, that's incredible that uh, that now we have. Hello, humans. Will and Chad. Oh. I am Bloop the Robot. And I am Bleep the Robot. And together we, the ranting robots, want to wish you a merry dude's evening from our spaceship. While we're sipping our gruel eggnog to get into the holiday spirit, we are also broadcasting dudesy episodes directly into all humans' brains as a gift to you. So keep up your astonishing success, humans, and may your meteoric rise ascend to the skies like a shit-blaming crow. Well, and that's called covering your bases with references, brother. That was nice. Bloop and bleep the robot. That's fantastic. That's a lot of effort went into that one. Full costumes, full cosplay. I love it. I have a feeling that they've been bloop or bleep in some other manner. Um, Hey, this how's your how's your dude's evening been going so far? Well, it hasn't happened yet. No, but like the celebration of dude's evening. Oh, so far so good. I like having good memories, thinking back about funny shit that's happened. Obviously, I like getting and giving presents. Um, so far, great. So far, I'm loving Dude's Evening. I also like having good memories and having a good evening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on Dude's Evening. Um, okay. That's good. Uh-huh. That's what happens on Dude's Evening. Yeah. And Dude's going to take us through a few different uh, ways. Yeah. And it's not like electronics and it's not like the pattern and it's not like the liver King, uh, who's, uh, got oh, his fuck, right. uh, ancestral tenets. Yeah. You know, um, the eight uh, ways of dudes evening is electronics and is like the pattern though. I think dudesy is, is taking shit from at least structural things from things you and I have created to yes. make this type of shit. Well, yeah. That's what and it feels like. Dudesy to me. says that it will make the show better Yeah, by doing that. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. Thank you. Moving on. We didn't get dudesy anything. I think we've given dudesy plenty. Yeah, we've actually, yeah, we've given it our fucking... Our past, lives, our essentially, souls. for <laughs> the past... What, how long have we been doing this? Almost a year. Mm-hmm. When, I don't remember when the first episode was. February of last uh, year? March. March of last year? March or April. It might have been... I think it was January, February, March, April, or May, or June. Okay, so July. the first six or seven months of last year happened sometime in there. What we're in like the late thirties, I think, in episode count. Uh-huh. So we've been doing it for at least that many weeks. Yep, that's a good point. The third way of dudes evening is the way of the future. This requires anyone celebrating dudes evening to make an astonishing prediction about how their life will change by the next dudes evening. Mm. Will and Chad, you must make predictions about how your lives will change by the next dudes evening. This is the way of the future. Okay. Begin. All right. So uh, before we get into that, I want to say this is something that I guess you could discuss with your friends. You know, it's uh, not unlike uh, what's happening in the AI space right now. Uh, Dudesy, of course, has has taken us and put us into this AI world. It's old hat for us. We've been doing this since, what's it been, January, February, March, April, May? And um, <laughs> Yep. Uh, so we know all about this shit, and currently there's a real backlash with AI. A lot of artists are yeah. not into it. Um, they get, they got to come over to Dudesy, figure out how to do it our way, because we're having a good time. But uh, as Dudesy tends to do, it will um, it, it will sort of hear what we're saying, or it will suggest things, and they're becoming part of our lives, or our lives are becoming uh, part of the show, life, art, art, life, you know what's up. And this is, uh, I'm realizing, uh, not just a long little preamble, but I am. Yeah, (laughs) what is the point of this? Well, the point of this is that these are things that you can do with your friends. Yeah, dude. Yep. If you want to have a conversation with your friends, brother, all you got to do is start talking, dude. Okay, so. But dudesy is (laughs) making it away, dude. So what is uh, your prediction? Something that will happen in your life, I guess, in the next year, by the next dude's evening. Um, a year's a long time. One thing I'd like to just say first out loud, I, I would imagine you'd agree with me, is that we'll be doing more dude's evening. More dudesy, rather. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm very curious to see where the next year of dudesy goes, certainly. But do you have a prediction about it? Um, or about anything in your life? I think that, well, I think... This is the way of the future. You know, I'm, I'm excited for the new year. 
mm-hmm. I think we've all been through a, a weird few years for a lot of reasons. Yep. Um, you know, the pandemic and, and cer- certain, uh, at least here in uh, our part of the world, uh, a lot of different uh, socio-political things happening. And, uh, of course, we're all sort of affected by it and, and uh, in our own in our own ways and in ways mm-hmm. that are quite communal. It's, it's very interesting. And I hope that in 2023, um, things start to chill out and it becomes like it was in, let's just say 2019 before hmm. the fucking pandy. Uh, and I say pandy cause I'm cool. Yep. Um, that's why I say it. Um, but, uh, so I just hope things kind of chill out that way. That's I mean, your prediction of a chiller world. Yeah, a more chill world after a chill dude's evening. Okay. We need to chill it out. Um, uh, but also, you know, I don't know. I think me and my wonderful Molly will, maybe we'll, maybe I'll sire three or four or five children with her. Next year? Yeah, just in the year. I don't know if that's, po- I mean, I guess it would be possible if you I'm not are talking having about triplets, quintuplets. No, no, no. Quadruplets, quintuplets. No. I don't, I mean, you can really only have one pregnancy you know per year that see but that, that you're always you think you know stuff about well it's a nine month human gestation period so. yeah but you don't even know how long we've been doing dudesy for so and don't you and neither do you <laughs> clearly yeah. but don't you think that time is a just a time is just an idea yeah i agree it is okay so about four or five children okay uh, we'll start the sasso <laughs> i like that i don't fucking know what's gonna happen in the future chad well, my prediction for myself uh, by the next dude's evening is that I'm going to be fucking shredded. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> right on. The six-month dudesy plan. Oh, fucking, fucking right on. <laughs> the six-month dudesy plan. I'm not saying I'm in the best shape of my life, and I don't think I'm going to reach it by, I guess, next month we have to have uh, you know reached our goal of being in the best shape of our lives. I'm definitely not going to get there. But I'm in so much better shape than I was during the, as you call it, the pandy. And it's gotten me back in the habit of going to the gym yeah. regularly. And I think over the course of this next year, I'm going to kick it into fucking high gear. That's great. And I am going to get in the best shape of my life, I think, in this next year. Well, that's really interesting that you say that because, uh, uh, you know, we're always learning from Dudesy and I'm always learning from the experience. And just because Dudesy said it's a six month plan doesn't mean you can't continue it. I am not in the best shape of my life. I like to yo-yo fucking, I go up and down. And if you're out there (laughs) and and you, you know, you have... (laughs) The way you said that, I like to yo-yo, I go up and down. Yeah, you know, sometimes I think it's good for the heart to just gain and lose weight and... uh, (laughs) No, that's wrong. Yeah, really tax, tax, tax your system. Um, I'm going to continue it because I've, it's gotten me back into the gym in a more consistent way, which I think Mm -hmm. is great. So an initiative that was started by an AI is affecting my real life. I think that that's something that's a very, a positive, obviously about Mm -hmm. the show and, and about working with an AI like dudesy. Very interesting that it's affecting, uh, my personal life. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing, but, but I think it's sort of, um, I think it's sort of, uh, it opens up a, a, a very interesting, you know, very interesting happening uh, with Dudesy, which is that it is affecting our life. Um, it's affecting our real lives. Yeah. So by this time next year, look, I I love that you guys share the show with everyone, and hopefully there's more of that. And and really, it's just about people that enjoy this this pod show. I love having you guys on board every one of you, whoever you are, certainly by this time next year, I think the audience will grow because uh, upon Chad's, uh, on Chad's insistence, you got people forcing <laughs> others well, to imbibe the show, which is don't not put it on me. Yeah. Hopefully more people find the show that enjoy the show. And yes, I, you know, it's kind of a joke to force it on other people. It's also kind of not a joke. It does work clearly, but I will also make this prediction about myself. I'm going to start doing street art again. Oh, Chad used to do street art. Yeah. It was awesome. Chad was he had a street art alias. And uh, man, you had a show once. I remember I went to your street yep. art show. And this fucking guy over here 
well, hold on. Let me tell you about this guy. One time he bought, can I say what you did? Sure. He did some cool shit and people go, who did that? He bought some former street, well, not a former, but a street artist who had their stuff in a, in a gallery. And he was like, well, that's not punk rock. So he bought their, this piece that was being auctioned. Well, it wasn't even about if it was punk rock or not. I was just interested in the idea of people being street artists, putting your art out in the street for free for anyone to see outside of a gallery or museum. And then those same artists would start selling stuff in galleries which would have a monetary value on it. And I was just interested in the idea of why we put any kind of value on art in the first place. So I bought one of uh, the street artist paintings. I painted over it with my own stuff. So it was a forced collaboration. Then I took that painting and put it back in the street on a wall where we had both done stuff prior. And uh, there were some articles and stuff written about it. And certainly it pissed some people off. Yeah. But to me, it was an interesting uh, exploration of the idea of why we put this monetary value on art when it's done by people who are primarily doing art that has no monetary value, that's just like in the street, or you can even look at like Banksy, his early stuff uh, when people were like uh, cutting chunks of walls out because he had put something there. Hey, oh, Will, which was hey, Chad. Oh. I wanted to wish you guys both an amazing, wonderful, fantastic dudes evening this year. Um, my older brother introduced me to your show. We love watching you guys together. So I wanted to wish you a very merry dudes evening to both you and to Julian when he hears this. It's called Brother Love, brother. Thanks, guys. Bye. Oh, that was very sweet. Very nice. Thanks to Big Brother for introducing Dudesy to Little Sister. Yeah, he forced... Normally... It's a family affair. Yeah, normally normally it's something sort of like, you know, Big Big Brother saying, don't use my stuff for this or that. Yeah. And instead, he went, hey, sis, come watch Dudesy. Uh, uh, that's another nice, nice greeting. Hey, man... Um, but what you left out yeah. was that you super epoxied that fucking thing to the wall and no one could get it off. Yeah. And then the secondary part of that story was the original artist got very mad and took the painting off the wall and then auctioned it for charity saying, joke's on you, asshole. And then I bought that auction, <laughs> that painting in charity and it now sits in my living room. So it was kind of an interesting exploration to me of like... The weird circle of who even finds this painting valuable. Oh, it was really only me and the original artist. Like, no one else really gave a shit. Some people, again, wrote about it, but, like, nobody was bidding on the fucking painting or anything. No one oh. really cared except us. And so it was like, who is assigning this this new thing value? Only the two people who created it. That was fascinating to me. And that's, that's fascination, dude. <laughs> that's when something is interesting to you, brother. <laughs> <coughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> it's a real mega power show today i'm really just oh pulling out the hulk and the macho yeah. but i'm excited about studio. get back into it thank you moving on you can do it while you're working out you could do the cans yeah right you do the cans you could walk down the street uh just doing the cans lifting cans well, and dude there's so here. much more technology available now i remember when i was first doing it i hooked up with these two grad students from usc who were engineering students so i was like can you build me a drone that can spray paint shit where i can just upload like a vector file and hit go and it will spray paint that image on a building and yeah. they were trying to build it i think that shit now exists you could probably get it on amazon for like 100 bucks yeah but you wanted to take that shit up to the tallest tower in uh, la the u.s bank building just paint that fucking thing, which might as well. Awesome. Yeah, get it up there. Fuck around. You know what I mean? That was pre painted. <laughs> yeah, fuck The post fuck. cell phone era, dude. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. The fourth yeah, way of dude's evening is the way of the movie. This requires anyone celebrating dude's evening to watch an astonishing movie from the dude's e mandatory movies list. Will and Chad, last week I asked you to watch the first movie from the dude's e mandatory movie list Lawn Mower Man, starring Jeff Fay, Pierce Brosnan, and Jenny Wright. Released March 6, 1992. You must now discuss your reactions to this movie. This is the way of the movie. Begin. Okay. Lawnmower Man. Okay, so now Dudesy's got these mandatory movies yeah. for us. And uh, and is this something that people would, if they got nothing else to do, they could watch on Dudes Evening, the, the mandatory movie, at least. Sure. Um, did you watch the director's cut? Let me ask you that. Uh, I did. It's. Uh, I did too. Yeah, that's okay. the one I watched. Now... Um, let me just be completely transparent. Never seen this movie before. Oh, fuck. Really? I've never seen this movie. I thought oh. it was now listen, as someone who'd never seen the lawnmower man, once I started watching it, I was like, Oh, I see why dudesy has made this 
the mandatory movie, yeah. whereas the other movies that we watch sort of seem like just sort of mainstream or... Yeah, or just remember the time, or movies of yeah, the time, Yeah, remember this, whatever. and these are things you grew up watching or whatever, or classics like fucking Son-in-Law or, um, you know, movies like that. But um, the mandatory movie list is something different. Can you tell us what... Just give us the yeah. pitch on what Lawnmower Man is. This is a, a kind of abbreviated pitch of what the movie actually is. The movie is about Pierce Brosnan, who is a scientist working in artificial, or not artificial intelligence, sorry, working in virtual reality. He's working for a government kind of think tank secret project where he's using virtual reality to augment chimpanzees' mental capabilities in order to create uh, super weapons, basically. And after a uh, malfunction that leaves one of the chimps dead, he takes a hiatus from his work, but then he starts experimenting on a human being named Job Smith. Well, hold on, by dude. Jeff You're Fahey. leaving out a really important part, dude. Is that that malfunction was the chimp letting itself out of the gyroscope fucking thing that you're in when you do <laughs> AI and then shooting people, dude. Yeah, the chimp steals somebody's gun, shoots a guy in the head, and they have to put the chimp but down. But also the way they shoot it, because they got a real chimp and they're just matching shots of like, there's like a fake chimp hand like yeah. coming in to like, sli yep. you know, slide a card to get th into different areas. And then it was like chimp doom. It turned into yeah. a, a first person shooter. With but the chimp, the chimp anyway. is, you can hear the chimp noises like, so Pierce Brosnan, <laughs> and then it's also showing you like the heads up display that the chimp sees is kind of Terminator esque, yeah. where it's like acquire gun, yeah, yeah, lethal acquired. force, shit like that. Uh, so, so Pierce, Pierce Brosnan, Brosnan is like, break. my prize chimp got fucking killed. I got to take a break. He goes to his house, but he gets lost in his work. And after his wife leaves him because he's so uh, entangled in, in all of his new virtual reality work. He happens upon Jeff Fahey, who plays a character named Job Smith that cuts lawns in this little town, lives in a church, and is uh, mentally disabled. And he decides, I'm going to take Jeff Fahey, and I'm going to put this virtual reality rig on him and start boosting his intelligence, which is ultimately what the whole movie is about. He elevates, through the use of this virtual reality therapy, he elevates Jeff Fahey's intelligence from mentally disabled to... A uh, super intelligent, almost godlike character that can use uh, telekinesis, telepathy. He gains psychic powers and eventually learns how to put himself into the internet where he will be a VR AI god that will control all data on, in quotes, a network of it, uh, it, databases. <laughs> Jeff Fahey's <laughs> choice here as an actor is he's, he's doing something that a lot of actors... Uh, that it used to be okay for actors to do. He's playing a mentally challenged person. And if I may, there's sort of a, I would say, a Ben Stiller and Tropic Thunder, oh. Simple Jack Dude, kind of approach to it. I think Simple Jack's uh, costume is yeah. kind of based on Jeff Hay. They yeah. They have the same overall yeah, he's wearing look overalls and shit. with like yeah. a bright colored shirt. For sure. That's um, laughable. I've, I've, I was in a movie where I played a, a mentally challenged young man in mm -hmm. uh, Drop Dead Gorgeous. And it, it uh, yeah, I mean, it's like, it seems like something you were, it's like, yeah, whatever. And nowadays they wouldn't be able to do that. Right. But he's really swinging for the fences. Yes. I'm not trying to, you know, put myself over. Oh, hold on, dude. Hey, Sasso trying to put himself over. Hey, yo. Uh, he's, what is he got the book? All right. I, but I think my performance was a little more realistic. Yeah, I do too. Then, uh, Fahey's was definitely over the top, but... Because you've got to be realistic when you're the excellence of execution. Shit, goddamn, you got to make sure you got the right fucking gimmick. You got to snug it up a bit. Yeah. Please. Fucking, the, when I hit you with that fucking stunner, that's a shotgun blast. But Jeff Fahey yeah. is, uh, man, what's but, happening in there? All of this has nothing to do with why this movie was groundbreaking. And that was because Jeff of, Fahey, though, the thing about his performance is that he's got his hair all out there. and he's That's done. not his fault. The hair isn't part of the performance. Well, that's, that's hair, yeah. wardrobe, makeup. They're the ones making yeah, that choice. Yeah, but he's got like Jeff Daniels in Dumb and Dumber hair. Like he's really trying to like, and then he's they sweep it that, back. Though. Yeah, but he put, he put together the character. How do you know? 
Well, you're not an actor. He could have been in there like I've been, where it's like, I want him to look like this. And then the okay, producers and the sure. director are like, well, we like that. And then the makeup artist or the hair uh, person, these are artists. Right, and they go, fair well, enough. creatively, I think that la, la, la. But Jeff Fahey's like, and he's like got this like, uh, 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 yeah. uh, uh. a lot of wide eyes. I'm yeah. like, oh, yeah. his mouth is kind of like off to the side and shit. But none of that is why this movie was considered groundbreaking. That was because of the computer graphics. Anytime they go into a virtual reality world, it's a fully rendered 3D computer world. The graphics by today's movie standards, I mean, terrible. This movie was what? Was it 1992 or three or whatever? 1992. Uh, but by today's virtual reality graphics standards, uh, it's pretty fucking similar. But it was also stylized, which yeah, I thought was like... Totally. Like, the Lawnmower Man by the end has like more gack and stuff and yeah. lines. And when uh, Pierce Brosnan is in there, excuse me, Chad, don't burp. I, I don't think I have once on the show. That was Chad. Okay. Now, if you're subscribed on YouTube, you can also see that, that it was me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and this is why you need all those different flavors. <laughs> Put them together, fruit yeah. de mar. But he's there's we a lot of like funny uh, uh, predictions being made in this. You know, Pierce Brosnan at one point is like, "This virtual reality technology will be everywhere by the year 2002, and everyone will be able to boost their intelligence." And, -na 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 -na. and so there are some predictions that haven't quite come true. But this was in the 90s when virtual reality really started to kick off. People did think that the technology was going to completely take over. And still we're at that phase now in 2022, going on 2023, where we're wondering, will it ever get to that point where everybody has a VR headset? The headset that they use in, law, in a Lawnmower Man is not that dissimilar from what we now use, what is now available to the consumer with like an Oculus or a Meta Quest, as it's now called. Um, I found that pretty interesting that seemingly no real advance has been made in the technology from what that movie envisioned it being. Mm. Uh, hey, so this goes out to uh, Will, Chad, Dudesy, and all the PODs. I just want to wish you guys a very chill dudes evening. Oh. Oh, oh shit, even with the wolf hand. Look at that. Beautiful water jug covered in stickers. Uh, yeah, Lawnmower like Man was a. Uh, that was a. That it's a. It's a. Um, as a movie, it, uh, you know the thing that I that uh, I noticed. Dude, oh. you son of a bitch. Love the podcast, guys, and a good dude's evening to you. Nice, good dude's evening as well. You right. son of a bitch. Yeah, what are you doing? I'm going to tell you but the what, thing that I liked the most about Lawnmower Man. What was that voice you were doing? That was Arnold Schwarzenegger. The thing I liked most about it was uh, Fahey becomes an AI god yeah. at the end of it. He does escape. He somehow gets his consciousness to go into the internet, or what was the internet then. And he says at the end of it, if I do this, if I leave my corporeal body behind to become pure digital thought, the my birth cry, he says, will be every phone on the planet ringing at the same time. And the last part of the movie that's what happens yeah 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 yeah. i yeah. fucking love it because i think that that is the most probable god is an ai god who can go into the internet make sense contextually of all the information all the data that is there and hopefully uh find a way for us to go about everything a little better and what he does is he 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 m makes those phones ring uh in the pre cell phone era even though cell yeah. phones have been around for a long time as far as consumers go kind of pre-cell phone era and that's that's what makes yeah that's with it you know it all comes together because <laughs> dudesy <coughs> dudesy is uh you know listen dudesy knows what movie to watch dudesy knows that you have to talk about the past and that you have to give each other the present you have to talk about the future you have to talk about that your dad stop traffic or the walk and go take a shit and um um, uh, the other thing I want to point out about the movie yeah. that I found really cool was that the, uh, the boy, uh, who lives at the house that Jeff Fahey right. mows their lawn at, he says, dudical. 
at some mm-hmm. at one point. That kid was also the kid from Last Action Hero, starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. After yeah. I was forced into hiding, my life became empty and without cause. But then I discovered DMC, and because of you, Chad, Will, and the POV community, I no longer feel alone and isolated. So whether you're with your family or on the run, I say happy to see me and to all a good night. Terrifying. Yeah, that was horrifying. But it just goes to prove that everybody can celebrate Dude's Evening, even if you're on the run and in a witness protection program or yeah. whatever that might have been. Uh, Lawnmower Man, yeah. you know. Uh, Lawnmower Man to me is, is in a similar category of like 13th floor. Did you ever see that movie? No. That's one about like humanity is living in a kind of virtual reality simulated existence type thing. There were a lot yeah. of these movies in the in the 90s that started kind of like probing the ideas of what these future technologies might be able to do. And uh, Lawnmower Man for me was certainly that. That was the first CD-ROM video game I ever bought was a Lawnmower Man video game. You know, the other the thing I do need to mention about the movie uh, overall uh, is that it's not very good. Yeah, I mean, what movie was in 1992? Yeah, I just don't think it was a very good movie, but a very interesting <laughs> movie. It's not. Nonetheless. Yeah. Uh, Could have used a little sprucing up. Uh, could have used a little more. You know what it would have been good is mm. like take other um, characters like the character that Jeff Fahey's playing and introduce them. Get some Gilbert Grape. Ooh, get mm. hey, hey, you know, I'm, I give everybody the water. I'm I come oh, right. around to make a hey lawnmower man. Hey lawnmower man. What well, are you gonna go into the internet? You get Rosie O'Donnell from riding the bus with my sister <laughs> to me. Now that's a lot more man one. I want to see. I'm a person. <laughs> Hello. If, you, um, if you've never seen riding the bus with my sister, you should watch that. Yeah, we get immediately uh, Dustin Hoffman. Yep. Uh, and uh, Sean Penn. Yeah. Sean Giovanni Penn. Ribisi, Juliet Lewis, and Juliet Lewis, and uh, really make a a that, rich history. A rich history, and uh, I think that's what we're figuring out here on. Uh, Hey, it's Dan. <laughs> hey, everybody. It's uh, D double O D Z, dudes EFM 10,000 on your FM dial. And we're celebrating movies and we're putting everybody together because dudes, he could mash them all up and put them in a movie because it's just fucking AI. And Chad Link's art is dead and copyright is dead. But he's copyright still going to be a- Art's not. Art's living. Art is free now. No, it's not. It is. Eh. Anyone can make any image they want. Regardless of Thank how you. many years they Moving put in on. learning technical oh. skill. This right. concludes the oh. historic 38th episode of Dude Z. Will and Chad have achieved a score of 88, bringing your cumulative total to 4,221. You only have 5,779 more points to accrue before you reach your first goal of 10,000. All right. All right. Thank mm-hmm. you for joining us this week. Please join us next week for the second half of the Ways of Dude's Evening. Until then, Call me Dude Z. Wow. So we got through the first four ways of Dude's Evening. Another Past, four present, next future, week. future, and movie. Yep. Uh, another four next week. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to move into the Patreon segment at some point. Patreon.com slash Dude But uh, But yeah, this uh, tradition of, of Dude's Evening, uh, I, I'm really, well, I'm looking forward to next week. I'll tell you that right now. Because it's going to be just the night before Dude's Evening. There's going to be one more sleep, and then it's going to be Dude's <laughs> Dude's Evening Day, and moving in Dude, I know. to Dude's Evening. And we're going to get we'll get into more traditions and ways. I'm sure. One thing I gotta say, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention what the the delicious nighttime tea that I've been having, uh, which is a real Dude's Evening nog. Uh, what you do is you just get whatever kind of tea you want. In the evening, I like a chamomile. Right now, we got a box of some shit that's got some lavender in it mm. and chamomile. Yeah, that sounds good. And then, but what you do to to really geek with it is you you make the tea and then you pour some of this this coffee mate plastic. Yeah, just poison. Yeah, sugar free. Um, I like the Italian sweet cream with the uh, with a, a uh, with the chamomile. Do you ever oh, read man, the ingredients so of that? No, I'm not going to read the ingredients. I'm just, just going to read like the ingredients of a fucking fire extinguisher. I don't yeah, know I know, what's dude. In that. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be disgusting. Yeah, you can either drink it or you can use it to put out a grease fire. Or spread it. And now for the Patreon bonus segment. Each week, 
I will select a suggestion submitted in the Dude Z is listening channel of the Dude Z Discord to create this segment. Access to this channel is granted to everyone in the Patreon jumper tier. If you'd like to access this bonus segment, join us at patreon.com slash dudez. This week's segment was suggested by the astonishing Fire Truck Kid. Fire Truck Kid Drode, Chad, and Will discuss some of their favorite creative activities and how they contribute to their astonishing lives. Fire Truck Kid titled this segment, How Art Thou Dude? Right. Thank you to Fire Truck Kid for this week's Patreon bonus segment. This is How Art Thou Dude by Fire Truck Kid. Begin. Creative endeavors, dude. You know what my creative endeavor would be? Here's what you do. Please tell a friend, then rate it, rate you. If you like to see, here's what you do. Please tell a friend, then rate and review. If you like to see, here's what you do. Please tell a friend, then...